After a few days have passed since Yelan's release, the new bow Fading Twilight is now available for free, and in this video I will show you how well it works with her, but also talk about something that I think needs to be addressed regarding this weapon. So, it's no secret by now if you've seen any of Yelan's videos showcasing her, a lot of content creators, including myself, have mentioned that while her elemental skill deals considerable amount of damage and is the perfect contender to show you some big numbers, it's actually the burst which matters the most. And so, in this video, I want to focus on a fully refined Fading Twilight, what's good and also what's not so great about it. You see, the majority of guides that are made for any character are based around the Abyss or any other challenging content, where rotations and burst uptime are key to mastering the character, which is why I'll be mentioning energy recharge a lot and how relevant it is, especially for nearly every character that's been released for the past year or so. Now, on paper, Fading Twilight looks really great. It's got the highest possible base attack a 4-star weapon can have, and it offers a decent amount of energy recharge, and the passive looks pretty amazing, right? Well, for Yelan, the base attack is completely useless, since all of her talents skill with health, so no matter how much attack you give her, it's always gonna be the same outcome. In fact, she's so unique that even a Hunter's bow, which is literally a crappy 1-star bow, is almost on the same power level as Amos' bow. The only thing that differs between them is that the passive will increase her breakthrough barb as well as normal and charge shot damage, but it's not even going to be that amazing. So, this leaves us with the sub stat and the passive. Now, when looking at Fading Twilight's passive, the way it works is that it has 3 phases, each offering increasingly bigger damage boost, and the moment Yelan attacks, it will move on to the next one and won't advance for 7 seconds. If you start the Abyss and switch to her, you can deal normal attack quickly, go to second phase of the passive, do her skill and follow up with the burst, then switching to other character or by also just continuing to use her and few seconds later, it will go into the third phase and 7 seconds later it will go back to phase 1. Basically it cycles this way and from my own experience, when you use her burst, it's usually going to be benefiting from second and third phases of the weapon's passive, which is great. In fact, I have no problem with this passive at all. I mean, sure, it's it's kind of hard to keep track of it, even if there are these markers that appear above her head, but in reality, you're not really going to be playing around it and trying to maximize it, aside from the quick trick you can do by using one normal attack when you start the fights. No, the actual reason I want to talk about this limited bow is going to be the substat and how much of an impact it can have to Yelan's build and performance. The results I've had with it actually surprised me by quite a lot, especially when I compared it to other weapon options and is the reason why I decided to make this video, so I can show you what kind of problem I believe some players are going to be running into and what type of solution there is. Now, in order to see the weapon's true potential, I will not be using it against some kind of a world boss to just deliver damage and then compare the results with other bows. I mean, it's fine when it comes to evaluating potential damage, but just like everything else in life, there's theoretical application and then there's practical application. Now, in Genshin's translation, the practical part here is the abyss, and what we're trying to do here is to make sure that Yelan's burst is always ready when you switch to her. So, I will be running her in several rotations, and you will see just how much energy recharge actually matters. But let's talk about stats first. On average, Yelan needs at least 200% energy recharge by the minimum if she's the only Hydro character in the team and if there's no Raiden or Favonius weapons involved. In fact, this number needs to be a little bit higher, but it depends on what type of enemies you're going up against. Now, on my account, I've got Fading Twilight coupled together with an Emblem Forested, which has Sands with maximum health, and we're sitting at around 187% energy recharge. So, 30% of this is coming from the event weapon, 20% from the Emblem 2 set bonus, and about 30 37% from substats. Not an ideal amount, but come on, we're already using an energy recharge weapon. And things actually start off really well. Yelan is in a classic taser comp, and the rotation is pretty simple. Start with Yelan's skill, then burst, so that while the burst animation is running, she funnels the incoming energy particles to her, then afterwards we go to official, then Beto, and then finally have some fun with sucrose. Now once both Yelan's and Beto's bursts run out, we switch back to Yelan and second rotation starts. You'll notice she's missing some energy, but that's fine. Just use the skill, get the particles, and start the burst. So the fight continues on, and then we finally arrive at the third rotation. Now, Yelan is actually missing a big chunk of energy. It's not enough to start the burst, and this ends up with me just running around and using other characters before I can actually activate her burst. So, what happened? After each rotation, since Yelan doesn't start with burst ready and doesn't pre-funnel the skill's particles after using the skill, like on the first rotation, this ends up messing up her energy management. And unless you have godlike damage, it's 
pretty normal to do a couple of rotations inside one chamber, but the problem is clear. Even with almost 190% energy recharge, she is still going to have trouble activating her burst off cooldown. And the funny thing is, this would mean you either need to get more substats with ER or just go for energy sense, which is kind of a bummer since they're already using energy recharge bow. And in my own guide, I did say this usually means it can lean towards health sense. You could of course try to squeeze in her elemental skills somewhere in mid rotation so that she ends up using her skill twice in a single rotation. But that's a topic for another video. Now here's where things get interesting. In some cases, fitting Twilight does indeed deal more damage than Favonius bow, which is a completely free to play weapon you can get from finishing a story quest. However, because Favonius bow provides double the amount of ER from its substat, coupled together with the fact if you use her skill and then burst absorb all particles mid animation, this results in gaining so much energy that it fixes her rotation almost entirely and you can even go for health sands. But okay, let's say you fixed the problem with fading twilight, put on energy sands and test out the damage against something like our poor flower boss here, compared against Favonius Warbow, which let's just say uses entirely the same loadout with too much ER, which means it's not optimized, but even then, the twilight bow deals about 8% more damage? So yeah, unoptimized Favonius bow does indeed lose to fading twilight in theory. Or maybe not. You see, I believe this weapon is actually really good in certain comps, and as I mentioned previously, for example, using her with Raiden as well as Benny Boy who has a Favonius sword actually fixes her energy management even at 170% ER, which is great and you can have fun using her in comps like Rational. This also becomes less of a problem if you use her with another Hydro unit in the team. Or, you know, if you manage to unlock her first constellation, that also heavily helps with lowering energy recharge. But the point is, while this bow has its own problems, they can be solved, but I wouldn't advise it's just dumping a lot of energy recharge from stats, and instead focus on using teammates that can help her with regaining energy when using this limited weapon. However, the majority of time, Favonius bow is just going to be an extremely comfortable option, because first of all, it's very likely you won't need sands with ER, and fun fact, it's harder to obtain it than say HP percent, but of course, everyone's account and luck is different. While on the other hand, the particles she's generating from this weapon also actually helps out the other teammates. So while Fading Twilight has energy recharge substat, it's kind of lacking and you still need to work around it, which means either getting more of it or instead running her with this weapon in teams that can help her obtain energy. In my opinion, this limits her potential as a solo hydro support unit and using something like Favonius bow makes it easier to adapt her into more teams. But let's say you do have really good luck with energy recharge and got tons of it from substats or even sands. Why not just use Recurve Bow? If you don't have it, you can get one from this NPC at this location. You just need a single copy of it, and it won't cost that many resources to raise it. Don't get me wrong, I think Fading Twilight is great, but it requires some problem solving in order to use it. Now, you might be thinking, but doesn't Emblem Force Set benefit from a lot of energy recharge? Well, as long as she doesn't reach a certain threshold with maximum health, it's going to be better to have it on Sans, simply because it can help scale her skill damage as well as increase the burst damage. I mean, unless of course you have energy sands that also has health substat on which you get a lot of rolls to compensate for. But that is an edge case, although a pretty good one. Overall, I think Fading Twilight is a great weapon. It's actually very versatile and someone like Kujo Sara can benefit a lot from it if you don't have a 5 star weapon with higher base attack to give to her and since you usually run her with Raiden, the low ER from substat is not a problem. But I just wanted to use this opportunity to review a weapon from a practical point of view. I know that everyone's situation is different when we talk about artifacts, what builds you're using and so on. However, I think that the low ER on Fading Twilight kind of messes up Yelan's rotations and you need to look for solutions like using using Hydro teammates or Raiden or just building more ER. But we are talking about Yelan here. She has so many weapon options and she's extremely flexible when building her. So I wouldn't worry too much about it and instead, I just wanted to shine some light about the reason why there's always the topic of energy recharge optimization that you will see in many guide videos. I'm sure if you care about these things, not much info was offered here in this video, which is why I'm happy that our community has great content creators like Sevi or Mr. Slice. They also analyze things like Yelan's weapons or the new Fading Twilight, so you can always check out more of what other content creators have to say about the latest and greatest things. But again, just to repeat myself, Fading Twilight is great on Yelan, but I wanted to show how important it is to build enough energy recharge for her and how it can affect your rotations when doing Abyss. Anyway, I hope it was an interesting video for you and I have a couple of really exciting topics I want to explore about Yelan, so I'd appreciate if you could subscribe to my channel to be the first one to see what I'll be sharing very soon. But for now, thanks for watching the video and see you next time.